Hi everyone, it's Tracy, and in this designer tutorial, I'm going to show you two ways to use a vector EPS file in your designer document. Now I'm in the desktop version here. The iPad version is pretty much the same process, but it looks a little bit different, and it's different enough that I'm going to do a separate video for that, which I'll link once it's done. So the first way that I can use a vector EPS file is to open the file as its own separate file, which I've done here and just go ahead and select the contents that I want to use and copy them. So I'm doing in Command C, and then I'll go back to my file and Command Paste. And that's paste it as a curve in its own separate layer. So I'll go ahead and just drag this out to where I want it. And I actually want this below the flowers here. Now, because it's a curve, I can go into my Color Studio here, and I can adjust the colors however I'd like. I can also go ahead and zoom in here and select my node tool and make any changes that I'd like. So I'll just go ahead and drag that out really big just so you can see it, and then zoom back out. So I have that flexibility to make the changes just like any other curve. I can also go ahead and change the blend mode if I'd like and the opacity, I can treat it like any other curve layer. So that's the first process. The second is that I can embed the document. So instead of opening it as its own separate file, I'm going to go ahead and do a file place. I'll go ahead and locate that same frame file and I'm just gonna start dragging it out. And then I'm just going to place it where I want it. So I'm not gonna to be too perfect here. This is just to get it in place. And again, I'll drag it beneath the flowers. Now in this case, even though it's a vector, it's an EPS file that's embedded, which means I can't simply go into my color studio and start clicking around to change the color. I also can't change the nodes like I was directly in the curves here. What I can do, however, is double click on the icon and it's going to give me a solo version of that file. Now I can go ahead in and I can make changes to the color. And when I go back to that original document, it's automatically changed it over here. So any changes that I make here, including to the nodes, for example, let's go ahead and grab the node tool and I'm gonna drag this out really long. If I go back, it's automatically made the change here. So I can go ahead and I can close this out and the changes remain. And anytime I wanna change it, I just go ahead and double click and it takes me right back into that last version. It doesn't impact the original file at all. So if I were to go back out and place another copy of this same frame, it's going to be the original black version. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Now, just like with the curves layer, I can go ahead and I can change my blend modes. I can change my opacity settings. I can do all of the same things I was able to do with this layer. As far as file size goes, they're exactly the same. They're going to save the exact same size, so it's really up to you as far as what process you want to use. But you have two different ways that you can use these EPS files in your designer document. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it handy. If you have any questions about the process, please feel free to ask them below. If you'd like to check out the texture that I used here, it's actually part of a free texture pack that I've created for my newsletter followers, and I've included a link to that in the description below. Thanks so much for joining, and I'll see you next time.